these four healthy supplements that we should probably stop taking. And I'll, I'll list them in case you forgot the four, Dr. Pampa, and then you could just explain why they're actually not that healthy, healthy. So let's start with probiotics. Why are probiotics doing more harm than good? Well, um, they create something called monoculturing, which simply means we know that uh, healthy people have a very diverse microbiome, meaning many types of bacteria. Unhealthy people, not diverse, you know, very limited amounts of types of bacteria. So when you take the same four bacteria, seven, whatever it is in your probiotic for long periods of time, you start to monoculture. They have a negative effect on all of the others. So literally you take your diversity and start to narrow it. That's not good. And that also is the same thing for somebody who drinks the same kombucha every single day, right? Yeah, exactly. Because you're, you're, you're here's, there's a certain fermented bacteria uh, that you're doing every day, every day, every day. And again, it, it, it brings the bacteria to this, not this. We want to change the bacteria. We want to rotate our bacteria just so we're not st stressing the, the microbiome in the same direction all the time. We want to change the bacteria, a.k.a. the stress. So if you're taking a probiotic, you want to switch it up every couple of weeks or so, or go through a bottle, go to a different brand. And you, you're a big fan of the spore biotic, right? Yeah, no, I like, I like, it be, well, look, I always like to start people there because most people don't have spores. They're doing typical bacteria in their probiotic. Spore acts, um, acts more as a hormetic stress, actually. And it kind of acts as a stress into the microbiome. Typically, they don't take up root in your microbiome. Um, they, they flush out in um, so many days, but they add so, a stress and they create diversity in the microbiome. And yes, I, I like those and soil organisms do, do act very similar. So yeah, I like to bring in some of those very unique types of uh, bacteria. The second one you already spoke about, but you could speak a little bit more is fish oil. Why? <laughs> and when, you know, for me personally, when I saw you speak about fish oil in Boca a few years ago, I, I was like, whoa, I've been taking fish oil now for several years and giving it to my clients. What's all, what's all this about? And then I, of course, looked up the research and I stopped taking it and stopped promoting it. So why is fish oil doing more harm than good? Yeah, I mean, fish oils, it, look, it, it goes rancid, um, becomes adulterated very easily. And, and I know that people say, yeah, but not the one I'm taking because they take great care of their oil. And maybe they do. But what the problem is, is when you take in something so easily um, affected by oxidation, free radicals, the body temperature alone, what happens is the body has to steal, rob other antioxidants to try to protect it. Otherwise, it becomes oxidative and inflammatory in the body. And that's exactly what happens to fish oil. Look, you know, I think that um, I, you've interviewed Brian Peskin out of MIT. And, you know, he, he was helping his wife, you know, and it's <laughs> engineers uh, are the most brilliant people, honestly. I mean, it's like, and he got onto this research and realized that, my gosh, fish oils are not good. And I was speaking against fish oils because I was reading studies that were showing that they didn't help with heart disease, quite the opposite. They were creating problems and um, everything that we were touting them for, it wasn't being held up. And I was in maybe an interview or so, he saw me, he reached out to me and was like, you know, you know, Gosh, you know, I, I'm one of the only people that I know until I heard you talking about the negative ne negatives of fish oil. You know, there's something called the Co Cochrane Collaboration. What they do is, I think, is brilliant. Um, it's an unbiased uh, research source that they'll look at studies from a period of time, you know, from 2000 to present or whatever. And they'll, they have a very strict thing of what they will call a good study. And the, the goal is to look at thousands or hundreds of studies and come up with a conclusion. When the Crocken collaboration, which scientists look at as like um, the gold standard of, you know, man, when they come up with a decision, it's, it's really valid because they're not relying on one study. Okay, so they came out and it was like fish oil not only doesn't work, it's dangerous. And they listed why and the different conditions and what the studies actually showed. It was shocking to people, but it really didn't make it out there. By the way, recently, um, the Cochrane Collaboration has looked at masks. Um, it was over the summer. I, maybe it was June, May or June. And I thought, um, oh, my gosh, these results are going to go crazy in the media. Nothing. Crickets. But they showed that masks didn't work. So, you know, and they looked at from 2016 to the, I think it was, you know, that spring, I think it was April. 
um, of 2020. And looking at thousands of studies came to the conclusion they don't work. So the point is, is that I think that is a really good way to really get a grasp. So we're not cherry picking studies to prove our point. Um, and in this case with fish oil, it was a disaster. And fish oil has now been adopted by the big pharma companies because it's such a moneymaker, which is bad news in itself. Uh, so that's the second one. The third one is vitamin D without the other fat soluble vitamins. Why might that be an issue? Yeah, vitamin D, um, there's something called a functional deficiency, um, which means that, okay, when you look at vitamin D, you have vitamin D, K2, A, E, these are all fat soluble vitamins. They all compete for the same receptors. So therefore, if you're getting too much of one and not the others, you'll block the receptors for the, um, the minor amounts that you're getting of say K2. So now you're even getting less K2 from someone who's not taking in much K2. And what, what, what happens if you do that? Now you end up with uh, not absorbing calcium, you end up with hip, uh, an increase in hip fractures. And by the way, that's what uh, doctors, uh, uh, MDs would say, vitamin D is not good for you because it causes hip fractures and mm -hmm. it, it can cause cancer. Well, you know, they were looking at studies that just weren't completely understood. They were looking at functional deficiency because if you block vitamin A uh, by taking a lot of vitamin D, in fact, it would, can really have a devastating effect on immune system and therefore lead to cancer. Um, and vitamin A plays a very critical role there. Vitamin K2, if you block K2 and its responsibility is to uh, bring calcium into the bone matrix, then yes, you're going to lead to hip fractures. But if we take fat solubles the way they are in nature, in a certain ratio together, then that's not the case. Your body utilizes them equally and you don't create a functional deficiency. So vitamin D, you must have the fat solubles in, um, in with it. You cannot or should not take vitamin D alone. Otherwise you will create a functional deficiency in the problems that I just mentioned. So what, something they can do if you already have a vitamin D supplement that just has D or maybe D with K2, you could have that with a fatty meal to kind of help balance that out. And then eventually you want to get one that has all fat soluble vitamins. So DB3 from Systemic Formulas is the one that Dr. Pompa helped uh, the scientist over at Systemic Formulas. I use that one. And if you go to keto ketocampsupplements.com, that's part one of the supplements on that page. Last uh, item here is uh, just like a general multivitamin that somebody gets at Walgreens or on Amazon. Why might those be an issue? Yeah, I mean, look, they have a lot of manufactured uh, nutrients in them that look arguably if you had a massive deficiency your body would utilize it right but the problem is is that they can be very stressful on the liver because your body has to add and make conversions to them and break them down and again if it was deficient it i would argue that it would do that the body is smart enough to do that but the problem with them most of these things aren't utilized um, correctly and you end up in unbalanced situations uh, there's so many other problems. Um, these multivitamins have so many other um, things in them. Too high levels of copper, which can be oxidative. Uh, you know, I mean, just the, the, even the ratios aren't typically right. Um, and exactly. the colorings, I mean, you know, we can keep going down the list of problems with multivitamins. And yet, it, the four things that you just mentioned, you realize, um, I'm sure, I know you realize, Ben, but our listeners, that these are the four things that most people are taking every day. Most people are taking two of the four that we just mentioned. And that's the sad part, is it seems like the reality is, is that people just get bad information and it just, you know, just escalates.